top screen for a couple of minutes and we can go live. Hey everybody, I'm alive, mostly. Tantus is here, present in the flesh, maybe? Well, he's either that or he's a very elaborate VTuber. I've, I'm not that elaborate. If 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 I will bring out the JPEG tuber if I'm if I want to do something and I just don't want to be on camera. Uh, I have considered <laughs> like if I could find like one of those like two frame mm -hmm. PNGs like and if that seems more affordable yeah. like the very simple ones oh, that I like, know flip back. That, yeah, when they just don't want to like have their face on camera. But like it like lights up when you speak. It like you know, switches to the other v version or something. Yeah. The like the switch between ones. Those those are pretty yeah. nice, and I've I've considered getting one of those because uh, it's it's probably affordable. But like you know, yeah, of, my, of, of my like you know version of me. Yeah, there was definitely a point in time when I streamed where I was like, what if I just became a VTuber? And I looked at the price tag, and like, I'm good, nah. Mm. PNG tuber. It's for the cheaper ones of us. And honestly, yeah, what, if I, what if I just became a VTuber? I I wouldn't put that up for my like role playing streams, but for like some video games, I might honestly yeah. I'd consider doing that because then I don't have to worry about the camera for video games and could just be like, I'm still here technically. But uh, yeah, discussing tabletop. It's um, January twenty eighth. God, last it week of January. January. Yeah. Just, I'll I'll chat about how this week has gone, but I'll be do that at the end of this because like I'm not gonna have any this week in tabletop, but like you know. Because I pretty much took off the week. Anyway. Uh, but, you know, we'll, we'll talk about it. But we got some news of things we should yeah. discuss first. News and stuff. So, wizards did things and not things. Man. What, are, what, what else did it do this week? Like, well, like the, big one? <laughs> the first thing that came out that I was going to talk about before anything else, which I saw, was that um, D&D Shorts had their expose on a bunch oh, of that, leaks. Yeah. Which, it just painted the picture of what's going on at Wizards, where uh, the, the, the head seat, like the head, the head of the entire company of Wizards really detached from it. Doesn't mm -hmm. really know what's going on, you know, just as basically, like, business person. Okay, that's, um, god, I gotta get their names Cynthia right. Cynthia Williams, I think? Yeah, name? Cynthia Williams. That, like, she doesn't understand, like, really a lot what's going on. She's on the business side. It sounds <laughs> like there to be like if you're the president or CEO you don't have to really be like hands on with the company if you don't really know what it is yeah and so it, sound, enough, right? yeah, so, so, so it sounds like Cynthia as much as I was always kind of like trying to put some blame towards her sounds like there's maybe a little bit because she could have caught stuff mostly not her fault turns well, out it's one other guy's mostly his fault yeah which goes down below there and what was his name exactly? he's like the director of digital garbage yeah, let me mute this tab and see if I can get his name here. If I switch ahead to it, because I had the video up, but an ad will press applaud but play on YouTube because it always That's has play. to. Uh, was it Chris something? It's Chris something, yeah. Sorry, give me a second here to get his exact name. Is Cal? No, I don't think that's his name. Yeah, sorry, I'm just gonna... If, uh, you know, Firefox would uh, pay attention and work. Uh... Oh, yeah. I think it is Chris Cal. Uh, Chris Cal. Yeah, Chris Cal. I yeah. found it. Um... <laughs> no, that's Mario Lightning. Yeah. <laughs> So apparently, this person's been in like the position of try. At least he's in a director that has been very big on pushing a lot of this stuff here. Um, so there's an entire thing about leaks about his and his decisions and his entire thing. And if you want to see stuff on the leaks, go see D and D Shorts. He uh, then yeah. pr took all of his people that were leaking to him and sent them to. Um, I will get the name correctly because uh, Linda Kodega, for um, who's the one that broke all this stuff for uh, was it Gizmodo? Gizmodo, yeah. Yeah. Um, so like all the the leakers going to th them now, you know, instead. Uh, but there was that entire thing about that where you could kind of set up how the company had been kind of thinking and stuff, and it was like, a very unfortunate thing that like this picture was very doom and gloom at the beginning of the week. 
Um, uh, slash ban the entire name of the character. God, that's such a long name. It, that's what they do in order to make it annoying. Um, I'll copy paste by this thing. But it, it, it just began the week, and there was this entire thing I that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, such a bad mod, dude. That's okay. Uh, Light Lightning was able to help out too. Um, I, I could have. <laughs> All right, fair enough. <laughs> I keep forgetting that kind of stuff. Um, but anyway, so it's sort of like uh, there were plenty of people that were like, were worried that no matter what, we were not going to get any, we could maybe get some ground back, but there was always this level of stuff that we would never get past, and that was going to be the kind of yeah. honest end of it, you know, we we're yeah, going to hit I, a I point have, in time. I had given up on, on OGL 1.0A for sticking around, mm -hmm. and I was already just, you know, good. <laughs> Go to a different system, which I probably still will. I think the 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 most doom and gloom is someone that uh, I can't remember who it was, because it was I was just watching a stream that someone was discussing some of this stuff. Um, that they said they they showed a Twitter of someone, and they paint a picture that was one of the most doom and gloom pictures of it all, which it would be that this might drive all of us away, but in like. A year's time, when their tabletop thing comes out, all the thirteen-year-olds and stuff that don't know out about it are going to pay for their thirty-dollar subscriptions. Yeah. Are going to pay for all the DLCs that seems like they want to put in here. That they want to like turn it into an actual like video game or mobile game or something, yeah. you know? And it will be successful and earn them a lot of money. And the it will have D and D plastered all over it, and it will be D and D to these people, and they will not know what it was to everyone else that was snubbed. So that was the yeah. that was very doom and gloom and when I'm I was hardly sick, so thinking about that shit while hardly yeah. sick is not great. Not great. No. No. Um mm. we did get that um and this was just a couple of days ago I heard like I've got the thing ready to post. I was gonna okay. Uh Hasbro laying off thousand employees. Yeah. Yep, I was sort of firing a shitload of people. Mm-hmm. Now there was some good news on Paizo's end that kind of went along the same side, but we'll talk about that separately in a, in a topic after this one. Yep. And then yesterday, the bomb in our favor dropped. Um, we won, I guess. Maybe kind of, sort of. It's the best outcome we were gonna get because we got what more or less we wanted. Yeah. OGL 1.0 is going to remain in place untouched. Uh, and SRD 5.1, which you don't know is 5th edition D&D, is now under a Creative Commons license. Yep. Um... That part matters a lot because they cannot revoke or go back on that ever. And it went up into this Creative Commons as soon as they published it. Yeah. So sort of like, as soon as they said this, they had the file there, and this is an international law, Creative yeah. Commons. So that, that's an important thing, too. This is international. It's not just America. It's not just one country. It, it's supposed to be that, like, everything in that SRD can be used in those wordings in your material, and you should be fine. Yeah. It, the Creative Commons license effectively means a copyrighted work is now free. Um, yet it is completely out of Wizard of the Coast's hands. Mm -hmm. Typically, it, it's it's in the hands of Creative Commons, which is a non-profit. Yeah. Um, I I think there is it, like there there has been some discussions because there's some there's some interesting things that are in this that are kind of in and yet not in the Creative Commons. Like they give stats for monsters like owlbears and stuff and things yeah. like that so those are there but they do mention other things like mind flares count straws yeah. mentioned it, so it, they wouldn't put their big famous stuff in there because e even that stuff wasn't even in the the srd to begin with or covered under ogl anyways 
I think the best I heard from an actual lawyer was because, like, the Beholder's there, you can make a spell called, like, Beholder Ray or something that would mention Beholder, but you really can't describe Beholder yeah. and can't stuff. describe what it looks like, and you can't use its arts. Yeah, because it doesn't have the stats or the art, and none of this has the art anyway. No, you know. the art um, specific to the, the books they sell. <clears throat> yeah, and we talked about that previously, like the art yeah. was a thing. So, same thing, keep in mind, there's just stats and concepts behind it, and mm -hmm. it, it, that means, like, I can, I could make stuff that references mind flares because of this, but I probably couldn't, like, make something persistent. No, you couldn't make stats. a mind flare. Yeah. Um, it's that weird middle ground that if you really want to publish something, talk to a lawyer. <laughs> Which was kind of the way it already was, because you really couldn't do those anyways yeah this opens that up a little bit more because in the old one when it was just under the ogl they specifically mentioned you couldn't do anything with these things they can't yeah. do that here so it does mean like i could make something called count strad von zervich it just couldn't be the same one as is in D. &D. Yeah. i can use that name now which is weird but i could Make you can reference his name, but you can't use his exact stat block. Uh, mm -hmm. um, or like, or describe his likeness. Or probably, you can't even really use I mean, I could probably make a, I could make up a vampire called Count Strahd, but he'd be kind of a completely different Count Strahd with his own stats yeah. and abilities yeah. and stuff. He's actually like a good, cool dude. Yeah. You know? His, his, his good twin. Yeah, he, he's got he he still has the mustache and goatee that marks him as evil. But since he was already evil, it made him good. Yeah, true. <laughs> uh, the thing I do want to mention about this is uh, OGL 1.0a. I mean, cool. That's good. I mean, one DD is just probably not going to be released under it. That's yeah. That's what I'm thinking. I, I'm thinking they're just going to release one or one DD or sixty under new shit. Just what I figured they would do. Anyways, because that's what they do with fourth. Mm -hmm. uh, and we saw how that turned out. Well, the fourth edition had other problems. Um, and the big thing I saw is the SRD 5.1 mm -hmm. is under Creative Commons. None of the other editions are. Mm -hmm. 3E, 4E are not in the Creative Commons. You have to go through OGL to use those. So you're still a little more restricted in using the older editions. Yep. Brendan. Not a lot of stuff uses the older editions nowadays no. anyway. I don't believe it'll, at least in a major publishing st standpoint, that anyone publishes 3.5 or 4 anymore. Because mm -hmm. Paizo doesn't print 1E anymore. It's all print-on-demand or PDF. Yeah. They don't really say any new stuff for it. Um, I don't know how much of Starfinder uses... Those mechanics, I've never played Starfinder or read the rule book. I, I, I've done a little bit of play of it, <coughs> a little bit of reading of the rules, but it's it's be very it rusty like, for me. I think it feels like more of its own thing. It's still a little derivative of it, but... Yeah, it, it's, it, I mean, it, cause it, it, Starfinder's that in-between of 1E and 2E Pathfinder. It's yeah. the middle child that's a little awkward to play. So certainly there are concepts that could be still maybe under the 5e level yeah. of stuff that would be okay but it's sort of like i don't know about like mechanics and stuff how well they yeah. connect together at this um, point but yeah this is technically a win we got what we kind of wanted and watsy didn't get what they wanted yeah so it's as close as we're gonna get uh it'll be interesting to see what they do with one dnd which I still don't care about that much. Um, I said my piece on one Dean already. I'm not going to repeat the whole spiel. I think it's the thing that already I was kind of on the fence about it, and then this destroyed a lot of my goodwill. So it's sort of like, yeah. I, I definitely agree. At this point in time, I'm just going to wait till it comes yeah, out. Yeah, I'll wait till the finished product. I'll still read the UAs and stuff, but I'll wait till the finished product is out to really care. Um... And then we'll see how that is. You know, it, uh, Wizards has done a very good job of burning away, like, yeah. all of its goodwill very quickly. 
It's going to take a long time to recover from this. Yeah. Um, if they ever do. There was another thing I thought I forgot about. Their, um, their, their, their ironic heist book was put on the market without fanfare. I oh, fair all enough. That. Yeah, they released a new book for all this shit. Well, no. Well, they they had it on the schedule, but they finally put it up like on pre-order and announcements oh. and stuff. But they had no fanfare about it. Oh, yeah, that's very overshadowed. But it's it's their um. They just kind of put it up there, with a with a cover, and it's their like five heist or like five to ten heist adventures. Oh, they're. Um, it's there another anthology book or whatever. I n think Mark Humes may have helped with that one. That may be where I know it from. I think the best comment was, no one needs another anthology book. We've had enough of these. There's been like three of them. This is the fifth one. Um, this is the fifth one? This is the fifth one. Only Candlekeep is good. I'm just going to say it. Mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's an easy way that they can make like one or two new adventures and rehash a whole bunch of old ones. That's the problem. Yeah, only, only Candlekeep is actually good. Um, Salt Marsh and the others suck. Yeah. I honestly didn't remember to count how many there was when they said it was when I heard it was the fifth I one. I thought there was three of them. Mm hmm. What are the others? Um. Candlekeep, Salt Marsh. I guess. I, uh, Radiant Citadel, I guess, is an anthology book. And Yawning Portal. And Yawning Portal. Yeah. Okay. It was uh, Candlekeep, Yawning Portal, um. Uh, yeah. God, my, my brain already. Radiant Citadel, Radiant Citadel and um, you mentioned the other one. Yeah, and this is the fifth um, one. Yeah, because Salt Marsh and Yawning Portal both are bad. Yeah, Salt Marsh. That's it. So yeah, yeah, they've had five now, but this one, they they keep making them, and like, I mean, like again, it was the irony that it's a it's a heist book when they were trying to yeah. do this, which was re it was just badly timed, which it wasn't on any of their part on their part, but like also like. No, it's just just poor timing. Um, yeah, it's this, it's this weird thing that like I don't know how much I like like it's so much interest in a lot of stuff has like waned for me. It's, yeah. it makes it so hard. Like um, I already was losing interest in five E products, for, like first party five E products. Now I don't think I have really any left after all this. This one's just not very interesting. No, like, the anthology books just aren't good. They're, like, even Candlekeep, only maybe two or three of the adventures are worth playing. Because a lot of them are just really low-level adventures. Which are you, not stuff I run, typically. Mm -hmm. So, hey. We won-ish, maybe? Kind of. I don't know. Close we're gonna get. It's in a series of a month. The entire landscape of our community, uh, as a whole, has altered. And yes, I don't know if it's in a good way uh, or not. Like, sure, we got what we demanded, but everything burned to the ground around us. So, mm -hmm. we won, but what at what cost? Because I mean, like. So many of the big publishers just like doing their own thing now so yeah maybe that'll be good I... man it's and i wanted to talk about this a little bit um when everyone announced all their their new systems most of these systems are going to fail they're going to disappear in the span of a year it's very hard to make a system and make one that's good and make it last yeah especially now when you have like the three big hitters of um, 2D20, um, Pathfinder, D and D, even Cyberpunk has gotten like major attention. Shadowrun, right? You've all you got the the market share isn't there. Um, World of Darkness still has its fans yeah. for the, for the D10 systems. Pretty popular. D10 systems, but again, like even some LSR stuff is still really popular, but it's it's really hard to get market share. But again, like a lot of these systems. None of them hold a candle to 5e is the problem. No. 5e is the, by far, is the largest in terms of market share. It's the one everyone knows. Yeah. 
like Modiphius does a good job of niching out their market, but they also do a good job because they make honestly a lot of licensed versions of stuff. That helps. You know, uh, making the Star Trek game, and it's if you want to play some Star Trek, it's a great Star Trek game, a great like, Fallout game. But the 2D20 system, well, it's great, is a very basic system. It's yeah. all relies on a single equation. Yeah. Um, so it has to have that licensing stuff to be interesting. Yeah. And, and you know, a lot of there again, it's just the thing is like expanding more systems into there. It's sort of like if Cobalt Press does their Black Flag, yeah. how is it going to stand out as is the Cobalt Press system and world and stuff? The only one that I personally think will stand out and remain is uh, the one by Matt Koval because his company is already fairly well known and very respected. Yeah. He is, himself is a very respected individual in this team. So. We'll, we'll just have to see how they, the, the, the world evolves. But we... I'll, I'll put some links into... The, for some of the stuff that we talked about into the Discussing Tabletop when I put it up online. Um, which should be this week. Uh, I was going to get last week's video up. I just was goddamn sick. Uh, we're dead. So, you know, I'm at, hey, I, I at least caught up to, you know, we just have last week's we're missing. So yeah. It's not bad. You know. Um, but I'll put the, like, the, the link to the D&D Shorts expose and the OGL here. But that yeah, comes. Yeah, the OGL link in the chat. So that's, it should be easy enough to one. grab. That's, that's the, the big one. one. Yeah. Um, Paizo announced something that we can talk about here, and I'll put this tweet in here that they had. They sold out of eight months' supply of physical core rule books. I'm really in two not weeks. surprised. That's how I'm much you run. Like, I know Paizo did the whole orc thing for like the good of everyone however Paizo also partook in a lot of really good marketing yeah. during the last two weeks they did. Uh, and a really big sell taking advantage of things uh, which was the smart move and I'm not going to throw any shade because that's just a smart business decision when you see your competitor doing something stupid Yeah, uh, you could jump on that to sell more products uh, so I'm absolutely not surprised they sold out. Yeah. I know it... my local game store is out of core rule books currently. <clears throat> Makes sense, honestly. Um, it it's it is still impressive that it was like eight months of supply in that quick. Like yeah. it, it, it's just it goes to show you that um, how much the community was kind of united with all this at time. Yeah, everyone was ready just to jump ship. <laughs> I, th I think people said it best. It's it's D and D is playing the game, not the people that make the product. Yeah, like <sighs> yeah, we were all just afraid to leave. Yeah, we we also don't know what a month supply was. To be fair. Yeah, that's uh, true. We don't really have those numbers. I'm assuming it was probably more than like maybe a hundred. It would be a month supply for their website, maybe, right? Because a lot of their stuff, I assume, is print on demand. Yeah. Um, but they had but usually still have a backlog. Yeah, of and stuff. They estimated they had approximately an eight-month backlog of physical books. Um, we don't except, know the exact number because they can't really release the exact numbers. It's a very hard thing to do because they have to figure those out yeah. first off. But I mean, again, like it's, it's their, still impressive. Their sale was super successful, you know, yeah. and. Uh, I mean, it's like, it's not just one month, it was eight months that they had, like, you know, estimated that they had on a, in, in sub stock, you know. I understand, like, you set up to have, like, you know, in case something goes wrong with the printer, maybe that's their kind of, like, turnaround, you know. That's why they would have, like, eight months of back supply. They actually might have, like, a year's supply or something. Or, yeah, you know. like, it is not uncommon, even if you print on the man, to keep a, a stock of physical copies to send out. Yeah. Because you don't know when there's going to be disruption in the like, printing services and stuff. Yeah. Like when we saw with when COVID hit and nothing could be fucking printed. Yeah. So, uh, hey, success from Paizo. 
everybody uh no when the avatar rpg happened and they ran out of paper to print on in the united states because of it and everyone had to outsource to different countries to print that was a thing that happened paper is uh not the thing in massive supply one of those interesting things about the entire setup that uh, as a community that uses a lot of paper-based yeah. products a lot of times, and, and you know, nowadays probably more electronic, but as, mm-hmm. as I always say, like if I've got the extra money and it's cool enough I would probably buy a physical book too. It's also not just paper, it is like high quality paper. Yeah. I've wor- I used to work in a print shop in high school and that shit's expensive. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, uh, let us give another link here to our next topic, and that is a, uh, Year of the Monster kind of thing. So, Battles of Ancestries is doing a Year of the Monster kind of bundle here that you can do, where it's the idea of taking, uh, you know, various, uh, monster kind of things, uh, um, and making playable race kind of stuff based upon them and big old books based on that. Nice. Um, so there's going to be, it's 13 uh, PDFs that are going to be released at the end foundry VTT modules is the entire thing. So um, you're, it, it is a hundred dollars, but you're paying for like 13 PDFs and 13 modules that are fully yeah. um, compatible with foundry yeah. off the bat. So, I mean, like, you're technically paying for both at the same time. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> there's going to be demons, doppelgangers. Uh, okay. Your monster get to play the new ancestors races. They talk about uh, dungeons, expanded gremlins, intelligent weapons, oni, mimics, minotaurs, nymphs, silde, which is a type of fae, slimes, uh, uh, like a medusa kin with a... S- I S T H E N O. I'm not going to try to pronounce that with my kind of slight nasalness night now. Uh, Hold on, I'm going to go to Google. I'm going to hit this pronunciation. <laughs> but, these are mythological creatures. Yeah. Uh, yeah this is a YouTube video, sure. Sofino. Uh, Sofino. Neat sound. The Greek. Ooh. Always the Medusa. Yeah, it makes sense. So it's very interesting to see something like this, and uh, you know, honestly, I like. Uh, and it, it's it is compatible if you're going to do five E. It's compatible if you're going to do Pathfinder Second Edition. They make yep. it set up for that, um, which is also good too. Honestly, at this point in time, we're you know you're going to still see a lot of. 5e kind of products. Yeah, slash. I mean, it's still the hard goodness. People still like it. You know, I still like it. A lot of this stuff was probably being produced in the back oh, end. Oh, God, yeah. A lot of this stuff was, like, probably just finished when this oh, shit God. Happened. The question is, like, what is going to be the result of this shakeup over the course of two months product-wise? Uh, yeah, because, you know? like, I know fucking Cobalt Press was releasing some shit. Ghostfire Gaming had a a uh, new Grim Hollow Kickstarter they were gonna do, and then this shit happened. Mm. So we, got, we don't know what's up with that yet. Still, we don't know that. What's going on with that one? Mm, and they got inform- and they'll have some aspects mm. digitally that you can put into Path Builder 2E, also. Uh, the uh, character creation tool for Pathfinder. That's nice. So if you can do it there, too. So, very neat. Uh, honestly, I just was it was a very interesting little, like, uh, big old thing. Uh, that uh, it's interesting to see this kind of thing because it's like a um, it is a pre-order, which yeah. you know pre-ordering books is it's it, I always feel like pre-ordering books is a little different than pre-ordering like a video game. Or when something. you pre-order a book, you kind of know what you're getting. For the most part. Yeah, um, well, books are easier to preview. Yeah, it's just a written material. Yeah, um, but it's a year-long pre-order too. So yeah. That's a that's a pretty big one. That's yeah, that's a, a weird one. Yeah, so it's kind of it's interesting to see, but an interesting thing to think about. Uh, but there it is. Yeah. I thought it was a neat one to shout out. 
so we can talk about a uh, game that uh, Modifius has brought to us. Uh, Iron Sworn Starforged. Well, I remember when this, this got announced. Yeah. Um, this is a sci-fi expansion to the uh, award-winning solo cooperative uh, guided tabletop role-playing game. I've got Iron Sworn. Uh, you're a space-bound hero. Uh, so it is interesting. Uh, let's yeah. See. I can... It's one of the first RPGs that I've seen that is both like you can you don't you can have a DM you don't need a DM but also you can play by yourself. Like, yeah. I've never seen it, uh, an RPG that does all three of those. Yeah. Normally, at most, you get like one or maybe two yeah, yeah. of those, um, but to get like all three is very unique. <clears throat> uh, so I mean like honestly um, I think I don't know if we've, I've talked about Iron Sword we mentioned this specific thing but I don't believe we ever talked about the original system yeah we might not have talked about the original system um, I think we talked about when they were announcing that it was going to be something they were working on but they finally yeah. have the deluxe edition PDF out now uh, along with all their product lines for it um, it is um, very, apparently very inspired by the idea of the Mandalorian. Okay. Is what is very inspired by. Not like the show, so I was made before the show was out. Yeah. Actually, I don't even, fuck, the show has probably been out for a long time, because I was at my old job when that was out. Uh, that show, I think, maybe came out in, like, 2018. I don't remember. God, uh, the but, first season? You're yeah, right. first season was old. Um, but it's... Kind of inspired by that idea of oh, that kind of dude. 2019, late 2019 was when the first one season uh, came out. Yeah, that makes uh, checks. Um, great show. Uh, first season. Second season, not so much. The third season, let's see if it's better. Uh, we can only hope. Coming out this year. Anyway, a lot, lot of that, uh, pl plenty of television that I could I could say were, I guess, it's not even TV anymore because TV doesn't really exist. No, the it's way. technically TV, but not really. So weird. Uh, it's for yeah. page book. It's D. It uses D six and D ten, which is not two D twenty as a note. Yeah, it's I'm... a different kind of system, and I do like D six and D ten. They are two of my favorite dice to use. What I'm guessing is this one is probably a less uh, modifius. Per, uh, is created more modifius yeah, it's, produced. Uh, it's one of their produced. Um, yeah, it's under the VIA stuff. So it's one of their produced things. Yeah, which again, I, I also, uh, another reason I do uh, like Modifius is that they give a lot of these uh, systems a little bit of a chance, more or less, because they give, they, well, they make them a bit more like front and center printed, you know? Um, sometimes these are just like um, unique countries, unique RPGs that are getting like English versions or, you know, other language versions and other ones that are just, you know, they're like, hey, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, help you by doing your books and selling them and stuff too you know so uh it's interesting good job uh another game to possibly check out if you want to yeah. uh, for some um lasers and spaceships another sci-fi you want to be a cool uh cool space dude space warrior uh yeah. non-distinct legally, legally distinct space warrior with uh maybe a some kind where, of energy based weaponry uh energy energy weapon and or energy based sword or yeah. something for random reasons yep that was he did he did get that in the show yeah i mean that is an actual thing and i i do i didn't necessarily mind that because of uh, oh, uh that's fine. For, from it's uh, mostly like it was the, the hey, remember this character from the, that old TV show that I didn't watch? I sure don't. <sighs> yeah, a lot of that. Um, so, this is an interesting one because it was developed by Steve Jackson, and I think it is Steve Jackson Games is putting it out. Mm. Is they're doing a new version of Wizwar, uh, which, I have to be honest, I don't know who owns it. One of my friends, maybe Joe, maybe Blaze, maybe another one of our friends, 
owns this and I have played I this game. I think I've also played this in high school. Joe might have it. So it's sort of like as soon as I saw they're doing a new edition of it, I'm like, this is like... Because I'm pretty sure when Joe got it, it was already an ancient game kind of thing that like... Yeah, it was a game from the 80s. Yeah. I, I think... It, yeah, it, I think it was a like a early 2000s print of it that like, you know, Steve Jackson games like put a sheen on or something. It doesn't really feel like a new edition. This is the ninth edition. Uh, okay. God, nine editions of a game. Damn. Yeah. I at least played this one. Yeah. I I remember this one and it was sort of like I'm it wasn't bad. Not bad. It's an interesting one to bring back. Um, yeah. I guess it's one that, you know, Steve Jackson probably actually helped design, so might as well, you know, bring back some stuff. They have Spank on here, which is Blaze's Blaze's favorite. Um. Okay, so Steve Jackson didn't make this. Oh. However, they do currently publish it. Oh, it doesn't make it in progressive uh, because it says it was originally done by a guy named Tom Jolly. Don't know uh, who he is. Game designed uh, by Tom Jolly. Okay. Done by uh, Cheesex in the olden days. Then Fantasy Flight picked it up, and then Steve Jackson picked it up. So de de developed Flight by Flight. Steve. Ja I don't know what this developed means, though. So. I assume they've develop this edition. Okay. This that helped develop this That edition. makes more sense then. The original certainly was not involved with Steve Jackson. Gotcha, 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 gotcha. Thank you. The histories of these things can be just so complex mess. Yep. Well, it, it's certainly funded. It's it's a classic board game kind yeah, of new edition. It's classic one. They also didn't want that much money for it. This is most likely a PR uh, Kickstarter. Which, you know, honestly... Advertisement. Yeah, also, advertisement. get your stuff and give some money. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah, like, uh, it's a $30 game. This is the kind of game that I would say would be, like, a $30 game, honestly. Yeah, no, this, like, feels like a 30 buck game, yeah. So, if, if you... one of those games you pulled a few times, you know, when you got nothing else to do. Yeah, it's, it's not bad. I, I, I would recommend it if you want to check it out if it, it just read up on it see if it's the kind of game you like it, it's a, a dungeon you, crawler kind of yeah up to six players you kind of you know two to six players uh kind of a little silly um yep. uh, check it out and one last topic today i did want to hit up on and that's this this um it's on backer kit and it's done by Green Road and Publishing is fifth season here. Uh, which is based on book series. Uh, which I don't know this book series. Though. Oh, I know this. Uh, my partner loves this trilogy. Uh, the Broken Earth um, trilogy. I don't know like about it, but I do know that N.K. Jiminson is a very uh, talented author. Yeah. Uh, a world where constant and unstable tectonic and volcanic after you threaten all life. A world where people are learning to adapt and survive. A world where everybody learns to that uh, Father Earth hates his children and always trying to kill them. Yep. The metal rusts, even stone crumbles. The best you can do is prepare the next disaster. It's Broken Earth. Um, so it's a role-playing adventure set in a very terrible world. Yay! Yeah, pretty awful. Mm -hmm. They got a quick start. <clears throat> you can download it. Uh, the quick start is also available on Roll20 if you want to check out it there. So it, it's compatible with Roll20 for some stuff there. They got a standard edition, special edition book, and a PDF. Um, this is live on Backer Kick. Yes, I I don't I don't use I don't check out Backer Kit really, so it's hard for me to like brain how their page here works. They have hit their goal with twenty six days left. Yes. Yes. Um. Let's see here. They go over the lore and all that different kind of thing, character creation. Um, they have social exploration and action stunts uh, as part of the entire thing. Mm -hmm. um, oh, it's the age system. Okay. Yeah. Um, that, that's good to know. I was looking for that there. Um, if you don't know the age system, it's uh, Green Room Press' own system. They've had it out for a lot. Uh, 
Like, uh, they use it for their Dragon Age, was like the original one that I think they really did it. Um, yeah. And they just have adapted in various places. So if you are familiar with the Dragon Age RPG, I think that's where originally it came from. And used it a lot of uh, systems since then. And even some yeah. more generic uh, fantasy systems. God, so. I love looking through an author's bibliography and then seeing just like normal stuff and a random licensed book. <laughs> She's written a Mass Effect Andromeda book, apparently. I didn't know they made books for that game. <laughs> wow. <laughs> um, God. Uh, what's a good topic for today to dive into? I don't know, man. Man, like, it's, it's, it's been, been a, a time, time, you know? Oh, God. Uh... Why, why don't we wait for a second and like go over what happened this fire. week? Because uh, <laughs> I I I can like I can that. safely say I have done nothing this week. Um, yeah, no, that checks. That makes sense. I too. wasn't going to join on Monday and it got canceled hmm. anyway. And then Fair. Wednesday, uh, I wasn't feeling great. We were missing a Eric, and then yeah. uh, you, you weren't feeling great. And no, I, was just I like, hadn't. I slept two hours that night and woke up at three a.m. I was still having those nights where I would like get like between like a hour to two hours sleep, wake up, and then yeah, have a while to go it, back to sleep. To put it into perspective, how uh, cursed that how that game wasn't going to happen is as soon as I sent that um, that post about me having been awake super early at like six forty six p.m., I passed out like mm. twenty minutes later, and then woke up uh, at seven a.m. on a Thursday. Hey, I mean, that's getting some sleep then. I've mostly gotten sleep. This this week has been weird. <laughs> I gotta say it. Okay. Uh, how, did, how was your week in gaming? Alright, um, Saturday. Didn't do anything, uh -huh. obviously. Uh -huh. uh, aside from the show, I think, did, I don't even remember if we did a show. We did a show last week. We did. Because we talked about more burning things. Um, Sunday, absolute chaos. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm a dragon in that game, apparently. Okay. Uh, we, we were normal humans once I became a dragon. Uh, Lindsay's character is a werewolf. Uh, Cell's character is a knife-wielding psychopath. <laughs> I um, think that's a type. Well, like... Cell's character, the knife does talk to Cell. <laughs> it's, his, it's his warlock patron. Um, Stabbing the knife. <laughs> Stabbed eight men and he won't stop stabbing. <laughs> okay. Um, we learned a bit of things. Uh, we all died and then we came back with weird powers. Uh, okay. From extra dimensional energy because we're superheroes, I guess. Uh, but then we fought a dude. Uh, and this dude uh, kept uh, max rolling his damage. Uh, so it took us like four fights to beat him finally so we could move on. Wow. And he wasn't even that strong. He just had like a long sword and we are level one characters. So he would roll like a 10 <laughs> each hit. Damn. <laughs> so we just, just, you just had to, this was like a stage duel. If we beat him, we would get to leave. Right. Uh, so eventually we won through the power of, I turned into a dragon and slapped him. Hmm. Uh, which is a lot of damage dice. Yeah. Um, I don't know what the hell is going to happen next session. More chaos, I assume. Also, it, it's hilarious because three of us have our weird powers. Cause we're just on Earth and we're normal people. So we have our weird powers. Uh, Jay's character t t hasn't gotten his yet. So Jay is just a Canadian man who's a, like a professor he has no powers he has 5 HP uh, he's got the highest he has in stat is like 14 because he's a human so maybe he'll get his special powers or maybe his special powers is not having powers <laughs> maybe his special powers is the power of Canada power of being Canadian <laughs> um, yeah, he has 14 and 12 con that's it that's his stats. Wow. We'll, we'll see. Uh, Monday, I don't do anything. Yeah. Monday, I slept. Hmm. And it felt really nice. 
Tuesday, we went, because Tuesday's our sci-fi game, so we did some cool stuff. We went and rescued a dude from some robots. Uh, yeah. Then we went deeper into the facility, uh, fought another dude, and then we talked to the dude while fighting him. It was like, I'm going to press this big button and awaken every psychic in the galaxy. Because the Empire before that did a big genocide on psychics. It was bad. Uh, so the, naturally, the two psychics in the party, who are the strongest people in the party, are like, yeah, I'm cool with that. Um, and it was a very tense session that very nearly turned into PvP until I think Cell realized that if he tried to, he was going to die horrifically. Because Lightning has a minigun, which does like like 3d10 damage or something and i have a psychic ability that lets me just do 5d12 damage to someone so i think cell realized he, he was going to die if he fought back um but a button was pressed uh and then the system swapped from stars on number and now we're at fifth edition characters that are level 10. So I spent my week making a 10th level character in Star Wars 5e, which, oh boy, let me tell you, I don't want to do that again. I don't want to make a 10th level character from scratch again. Uh, that is a spellcaster. Um, but, yeah, no, it was a wild time. And Lightning and our characters have, our, our casters that have over 100 HP, uh, because we're being allowed to use Constitution as our casting mod, because that's what we were using in Stars Without Number. Oh boy! <laughs> Lighting and I both have like twenty con. Wow. You're beefy, beefy. Sword. We are the beefiest wizards. <laughs> uh, I don't know what the hell is going to happen in that game anymore. We've swapped systems. <laughs> Why the system swap? Uh, it's what the DM wanted. <laughs> okay. All right. Which me... I'm fine with I don't like stars without number that much. Well, I don't like that system very much, so I'm fine with just playing fifth edition. That that seems interesting. That's what I'm um, saying about that one. Yeah. Uh, I certainly was not expecting it, because that's not something that typically happens. Yeah. Yeah. I, mm. Anything on Thursday? Thursday we had my game. Uh, mm. They fought a horrific monster in the sewers. Ah. Um, it was a real, real dead spacey monster. Ooh. Um, killed it, kind of. Um, it almost killed Lin, and I do feel bad, because every encounter Lin almost dies. Um, this time it was because Lin wasn't wearing heavy armor. I don't know why their character didn't have their chainmail equipped, but they only had 14 AC. But for whatever reason, decided just not to be wearing. And Lynn also doesn't heal as a cleric, so everyone was at half HP. Um, so they killed that, and then they found Sewer Monster's Lair, where they found a cool spell book and a cool map. Uh, and they basically learned that uh, the horrible evil elf empire kind of has a fanatical problem and they kind of want to just kill humans because humans in my setting invented death fog and used it on elves ah okay. uh, and i've made all this up before playing divinity 2 i'm like damn that's awkward that's just the same plot <laughs> uh, well um yes yeah, so that's just the thing that happened in my world which is fine Divinity 2 doesn't own the concept of magical chemical weapons. That's existed since 1st edition. Thank you, 1st edition. No thanks. I mean, I guess it's like it's one of those things is like... Yeah. Um, whatever, you know. It's, there's plenty of awful things. They learned where to go. They met a weird caravan who asked for some help in finding some people who they had lost in an attack. And that's how I'm introducing the new player. Is they're going to be from a caravan attack surviving group. Okay. Pretty pretty straightforward. Did you have uh, Friday then? Uh, right, Friday got cancelled because uh, someone was sick or something 
Hmm. And I guess we're near the end of the game. So Cell didn't want to run. Gotcha. Um, it doesn't feel like we're near the end of the game, I'm going to be honest. But I guess we are. It might be end of the storyline as it's supposed to be told. I don't really know. We're level 5, and we've been level 5 for a billion years. Hmm. Sounds like an interesting week. Alright. Uh, di did make me think of some things I was thinking of. I'll have to talk <clears throat> about that, but uh, I did come up with a topic then for deeper discussion. Uh, it's an interesting one. Uh, because we talked about Wiz Wars 9th edition, <laughs> is there too many editions, too many versions of a board game? Because I think, like, this is the thing that, like, it, it's a difference between, like, let's say Munchkin and its bajillion expansions. That's a little much. But, like, even Munchkin, they're, they're different versions. It's a little outside there because, like, you can technically play them together. Like, there's plenty of versions of board games that you can't. Editions of it? Let's say nine versions of Wizwar. It's a lot. Um... um. Like a fuckload of monopolies, but that's just... those aren't really additions; those are just like different words. Yeah, well, I mean versions, I guess is the word. You know, versions. Too many um... versions of the game. It is there too much at what point, and what kind of is that too much? So, man, that's a tough one because I think I'll use. Okay. Um. I don't have to think of a fucking board game. I'll use, like, Risk as an example, I guess. Okay. Because Risk is something with a lot of versions and additions. But Risk is also, like, old as fuck. Right? So I think... But also Risk hasn't changed since, like, 2005, to be fair. Because that's kind of when they hit their peak, I guess, of, like, the best game. Yeah. Um, I think we, it's hard to say when you should stop making an, an addition, but there is probably a clear point where you really should, your rules are as good as they're gonna get. Yeah, it's why there's like not a billion editions of of settlers because it's already a bad game and they can never fix it, but also a great game. Um, and kind of like perfect in what its rule set is. It's it's interesting to think that like when we talk about, like, versions of a game, there are different levels to it. And, and I certainly think, I, I was... I, I, for a second there, I was dismissing um, Munchkin, but I do actually think now that I've thought about it more, that Munchkin is the poster child of too many versions. Yeah, Munchkin just has too much stuff. Yeah, like... And also Monopoly to an addition. Uh, 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 to a certain point, but... Those are just different boards, and Monopoly sucks anyways. Because another game where I think it skirts a little bit of that, which is a game that I like a lot, is something like Flux. Yeah. Um, Flux is a very fun little card game where uh, the idea is that you play new rules, you play actions, you collect items in front of you, and then set down a goal that allows you to win with those sets, with certain combinations of like items in front of you. Uh, very, very simple and can be expanded in a lot of different ways. Mm -hmm. The thing is, like, there are a lot of versions of Flux, and, like, I can't say most of them are unique. You know, that's yeah. the thing. Is, it's kind of the uh, same game a lot of times. You no, know, I can... Lightning brought this up. Lightning has mentioned Uno. Do you want to know how many different versions of Uno there are? I'm sure way too many. Uh, 508. 568. <laughs> wow! Uh, that is how many different editions of Uno there are. <laughs> how? Each, each version of Uno they release actually has different rules. Wow. I The thing is, like, I would think that, like, a lot of just like it's the set of cards it's the same rules but nope. yeah a no. lot of them have unique mechanics which is wild and that's i think one i think uno needs to stop right i think you that that's too much oh yeah no no 
Well, I think if you can keep making interesting mechanics, I think you're fine to keep making versions of your game. Right? But if you yeah. can't add anything to it anymore, I think it's just time to stop. I think like, it's... Yeah, go ahead. Like, Munchkin is the same game over and over again. Just yeah. the cards are slightly different. But there's no mechanical changes for the most part. You're still playing Munchkin. Yeah. I, I think it ends up being that, like... I, I think they call the difference between a lot of Munchkin and, let's say, Flux. Flux has never done as much. And usually, yeah. like, if I would pick up, let's say, Pirate Flux versus Space Flux versus Normal yeah. Flux, each one actually does have little quirks about them in the way they work sometimes. They're very simple quirks, but, like, you know, while Normal Flux has the radioactive pot potato that switches around... Space Flux has, like, these parasite aliens that go, that attach to another keeper and turn it into a creeper, you know? Or, like, Pirate Flux has treasure as a concept, you know, and boats. These little things, are they enough to make it unique enough? In certain circumstances, yes. That they you can kind of play the game with slightly different variations on the ways and rules and you're not just having the same new rules and action cards done again, you know, because the keepers and the goals, those aren't really going to change in that game. Munchkin, mm -hmm. you know, the humor that changes, the classes yeah. change, the, the races change, but it's still kind of played exactly the same way. And, yeah. um, and there are certainly, like, if I look at what are considered to be as of right now two of the best board games ever made Gloomhaven and Terrifying Mart they have never had a second edition yeah because they are perfect the way they are in their design that is why they're considered two of the best board games ever made so they don't need to really change those there are other games which certainly like you know you put out a lot and maybe a bunch of expansions. Let's say, like, honestly, Arkham Horror. I had second edition Arkham Horror and a whole lot of the expansions. I like Arkham Horror. It's, just, it's again, it's, it's unfortunately one of those games that's hard to play because it takes a long time to play. Yes. You know? Arkham Horror takes a very long time. But when they put out the third edition, they improved on the way that they did a bunch of things in a very interesting way by making, like, a unique tile way of building the city so you can have a different city every time rather than just one board that you put down. I thought that was a cool innovation that added more replayability. Not that you didn't have a lot of replayability anyway, but it made it even more unique of an experience. So they evolved from 2nd edition to 3rd edition in a very interesting way. And that's, you know, and that's something you can do. Like, Wizwar has 9 editions. It's a lot of additions. It has been out for a long time and it's been through, what, three or four different companies now? Um, and each company probably put out its own original edition and stuff. So it's sort of like, you can see how that can also add to like how you have different editions of something. Yeah. So, logically speaking, Wizwar, I haven't heard about Wizwar in a long time. You know, that's another thing. It's been quite a while. A new edition of it now? Okay. If the last one was out, like, even, like, five, six years ago, that's that's pretty decent time in between there. And mm -hmm. is it just a reprint with some new art, maybe, that you could call a new edition with maybe little tweaks to the rules? Not much of a new edition, but if it's basically a new printing after a long time, that's not bad either. We're not getting, like, a million, you know, clues, a million monopolies, a million munchkins, a million yeah. fluxes. I think it also depends on the type of game you're making, right? Like a card game, you can get away with more editions because it's just more cards. Yeah. A miniatures game needs more editions mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. rules evolve over time. Um... 
and you learn things maybe in your rules that don't quite work. Like, I'll use Star Wars Armada as an example. There was a tournament a couple years ago where someone got who placed really high, his strategy was immediately banned within the rules. Ooh. Because it was that broken. Interesting. So they had to update that for the game. To not allow for to balance it a little more. Because when it's a player versus player game if that involves dice rolls, involves miniatures, and miniatures do special things, you have to make new additions to balance the game. For a card game, new additions can exist just for new cards or just for more variety. But for a board game itself, you, a board game or release is already going to be as balanced as it's going to be, for the most part, if it's designed well. Yeah. Um... So you could have another edition to spice it up a little bit, or with age. But I think nine editions is a lot for a board game. Because usually when I... Catan has five editions. And it's that's a game from, like, the early 90s. Yeah. Which isn't much older, or or um, rather, Wiz, Wizward isn't much older than that. Yeah. Granted, I think Catan hasn't had so much passing the buck between different people owning it. Yeah. Uh, Catan is a relatively one person. Or one company, rather. <clears throat> yeah. I think the thing about Catan is they have expanded the variations of Catan a lot, that it feels like there's a lot of them. Like, honestly, um, I think Joe has, like, Star Trek Catan. Yes, there's a lot of boards for they're the rule sets, rather. There's only five versions. Which, again, it's almost like the same with, like, Monopoly. Is If you like Monopoly, which there are people that do, certainly I'm we, not a huge fan. It's fine if you like Monopoly. I just think it's boring. Mm. The thing I was going to say about it is it's hard. There are so many different versions of it. Like, yeah. so many. Like, yes. having just, like, a core one, and then if you're a fan of this, maybe one of those. But the thing is, there are how many that are tapered to things? Like, I, I didn't talk about it because it wasn't something worthy to talk about. Yeah, but I just remembered it because we talked about this. There was a Britney Spears Monopoly yeah, by USAopoly. Yeah. Yep, that came out that. like last yep. month. Mm -hmm. I, it wasn't worth to talk about because it was that's like whatever you know. I, usually, when one of these stupid things comes out, it's yeah. if like, it's really out there, I'll talk about it. But the like, thing with Monopoly is, no matter what you do to it, it's the same game. It doesn't really change, right? There's not a lot you can do to tweak Monopoly. Yeah. Um, and it's kind of the same with Clue. There's a billion editions of Clue. It, relatively, they're all the same game, just with different characters and items. And, and, even, different... and even the variations they have are usually don't feel like enough. No, because it's still the same who, where, how, right? That's the three questions you have to ask at the end of the game. Who did it, Why? how they do it, what they do it with. Or who, where, how, I guess. A couple extra like little like tweaks here to vary things isn't enough to make it feel super different. Unfortunately, but if we're talking like from Warhammer Fantasy to Warhammer Age of Sigmar, that's an addition upgrade. It's yeah. a very, very different one that still is wildly unpopular. But Age of Sigmar is getting more additions and getting better. And when you can still improve on your your system, I think that's when you can still do additions. Yeah, we and like even like again, I, I think there's nothing wrong with let's say like Catan and having. Star Trek Catan. Because I do have to tell you, Star Trek Catan plays a lot differently than normal Catan because they added a level of variation rules. The basics are the same. But, like, if I removed the Star Trek veneer and just said this was, like, a space Catan with these extra things, it would be interesting. Like, um, I can tell, I can tell you, like, some of the basics, like, you... Take, you temporarily can take the role of one of the ca of the crew and you get an ability that you can use twice before you switch out to another member of the crew of uh, the original series Star Trek. 
and uh, there's like there's other variations of the way it's built. Like there's other games that do this kind of thing where it adds variation, and it, it, it like either has it's a new edition or it's got that like new paint smell on it of like Star Trek or something else. You can do it, just like it has to feel different, or it's just another pile on the pile, and then it feels too much. You have to make yourself unique, or it is too much, I think is kind of where I'm going with this. Like, I think that's why we feel overwhelmed by, let's say, like, Monopoly, in comparison a lot of times to, like, yes, Catan feels like there's been a bunch of them, but it never feels like I'm, like, overwhelmed with Catans where I've got a bajillion fucking Monopolies, because they're still exactly the same, where, like, if I would pick out any two Catans, they're basically the same, but there could be little enough variation between the two of them that might be like, okay, I can see there's some difference. And finding... The thing is, how much variance can you do in there? That's a Munchkin problem, then, that we get to. There isn't that much variation in Munchkin. That's why they feel too much. Because they've expanded in that variation. Now there's... everything. Huh. It's just that, like... None of us are going to have probably hit this problem a lot of times because this is a big company, big success thing mm -hmm. yeah. that you hit this problem with. If you encounter it, just be smart about it. Like, find your favorite. Again, newer edition, something like Wiz War 9th edition. If you've never heard of Wiz War, never seen it, not necessarily bad that's a 9th edition. No. But maybe under if you're curious, look why there's nine editions. Look like, yeah. you know, that one has more of a story. It's 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 passed between a whole bunch of different people producing it. That makes a lot of different editions. You know, different from Catan, where it's like been with the same company. Um ask questions, see why, see is this the best version of the game even though it's the newest. Mm -hmm. Ask a lot of these questions and figure out, you know, uh, <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. I thought I was on mute there when Worm said that, but I think he just listened to it. <laughs> that would be God, very would... awkward. Lightning was reacting to a speech. That would have been really weird. Yeah. He um, was here the whole time. Yeah. Lightning only thought he, we were here or something. I don't know. But, um, if you like Monopoly, just don't try to own all of them. God, just it's like so need, bad. I mean, you just need the one board, right? You just need the one. Maybe a second one if, like, you want the base game and maybe, <laughs> like, I don't know, if you're a really big Star Trek or whatever, yeah. insert your yeah. topic you're here. you're a really big fan of um, uh, D-Day, have I got a board for you. <laughs> same i could say with like clue or something else like that like you know there's there's or you know flux munchkin if you do love these games a lot be smart about where you're spending them they have a lot of versions and it's a lot of money to try to get them it's it's a similar to that too many expansions problem that i think we've covered the too many versions is just a thing and maybe if your game, like, if you already had a Wiz War, like, I'm gonna tell you, like, I know, I, th I said, I think I, it might have been there, Joe or Blaze has that. I don't know if I would recommend them getting the new version of it. You might not yeah. need it. It's, it might just be the same game, just, you know, reprinted, basically. And then, you don't. I'm honestly, I wasn't going to get uh, Arkham Horror 3rd Edition. It looked neat, but yeah. I already own 2nd Edition. With a bunch of expansions. Not going to spend money on it again. So. 1942 clue. I don't know what that would be. I, I just... I don't know. Uh, you know. Uh, you got to come up with worse things for clue. But that are also like would fit with the who, what, where, something. Yeah, so, honestly... Some old to fit into. Some, 
to just stop it like this. Some of those yeah. just don't really work also, because I gotta admit, was it like Friends Clue that I like looked at and I just shook Friends my head? Clue was a thing. Um, there's Dragon Ball Clue. They, they just, sometimes they just don't work very well, and they're like yeah. shoehorning it in, and I'm like, those just... Murder mystery. Clue's a murder mystery, yeah. You can murder. make it a... <laughs> You can, you can make it something equivalent, like, mentally to murder or something, like, you know, that. But, like, it's a stretch, some of these ones they've done in the past. Yeah. Anyway. Um, and that's enough for now. Like, I think this is, like, a supplement to the too many, like, expansions that I, I'm 99% sure I already talked about in board games. Um, so, you know... Yeah, too many board game expansions. Uh, this is in the same vein, but different. But you know, yeah. it is the it's a similar problem that can occur to a board game. Be smart about what board games you shop for, and uh, also just buy what you really like. Because there's a lot of like either versions or expansions or stuff like that. That a lot of trash that gets released. You know, mm -hmm. Maybe you don't need that Spongebob Monopoly board. Maybe you need that other Monopoly board that's nicer. You don't need the uh, Marvel version of Munchkin. You can just stick with the normal one, which already yeah. has a billion expansions, which you also yeah. probably don't need all of. No, I don't think you could physically play a game with every expansion because the deck would be too high. With every version and expansion of Munchkin now combined, I don't think you can do it as one deck. I don't think you can do it in the way that we 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 adapted to doing it, which was having like all the sets of decks set up. You can't do that anymore. That. Like you, when it was only like ten, that was still terrible. But you could have that set up where you have like you know a row of two rows of ten, uh, you know that you could choose from, and it was still fun to do that. You, you can't anymore. It's just too much. You play with one, find your favorite. Or a couple of favorites, if you want to still combine them or something. I would not shuffle them together. I, I would do the allow people to choose from a pile thing if you're ever going to yeah. get a bunch of them. That That's the most convenient way, because god-awful shuffling them together, you you don't get them apart very easily. It's, it's, it's a bitch. Anyway, uh, that, that's my Munchkin Primer. And, I mean, Flux, you just play a version that you want to. Yeah. Find one that's cool. Space is pretty neat. Original is just as fine. Gotta be honest. I like Flux as a card game. Anyway, <sighs> guess that's good for today. That wasn't a bad yeah, topic. Time. Yeah. Still not feeling 100%, so, like, honestly, like, taking off a little early is fine, too. Ugh. And then, fair, yeah. the week didn't end up too bad with, you know, wizards caving in the spectacular and unexpected way. Um, this week... I honestly, I'm gonna play this week by ear. Um, it, it's the unfortunate thing that playing Shadows Over Loathing is a game where I have to talk a lot. Yeah, you have to speak and read. Yeah, like at least I can take temporary breaks here and have to almost speak for a little while. Uh, that's true. But like in a game like that, that's a lot harder to do when you're the only one there. So I'll kind of play that by ear, whether I do that or not, or hold off a little while to get back to the one. It's another reason I didn't do anything yesterday. Uh, I, um... Uh, not only did I go back to sleep then before, like, I would have streamed, but, like, when I was awake, I couldn't think of a replacement at the time. <coughs> but I'll figure it out. Uh, Buccaneers should be back uh, on schedule. Um, I'll have to figure out what you guys are doing. I kind of know what you're doing, but, like, like my, my brain is fuzzed out right now a little bit. Uh, uh, I got some plans for some new stuff in the future. Uh, the two things that I can announce are uh, I am working on it, which I hope to put out next week. I'm going to start with some yeah, semi-scripted stuff. Um, uh, up That'll be put up on YouTube. Uh, I want to do a uh, Pathfinder character creation guide. Um, Pathfinder 2E. Mm -hmm. um, just because uh, with the Switch and all, I feel like it's an appropriate thing to finally get that out on my yeah. channel. Um, and then I do plan on 
uh, every couple of weeks having uh, a uh, World of Darkness uh, lore, I guess, dump uh, stream, I'll call it, where I deep dive into a World of Darkness topic, um, specifically Vampire the Masquerade. This will be my replacement for my series that I was doing on lore for Vampire the Masquerade. Um, gonna make it a little bit more freeform where I basically talk on stream about a topic for a while. Uh, probably do some prep work almost as if it would have been one of the edited videos. And then when that prep work is done, uh, uh, effectively have like a Q&A if anybody's live there and, or any questions from the previous week on the videos of it, or previous couple of weeks. And then I, uh, I'm gonna make it so that I'll probably just fairly unedited throw that up on YouTube right away. Probably just markers when the, uh, stream starts, honestly. That's my plan. I came up with this during this week here, because, uh, that one there, I can combine streaming with a little bit of prep work, almost like it's one of my role-playing games, and then I don't have to edit as much. Because if I just, you know, go and prepare a bunch of pictures and I speak for a while I I don't have to do a highly edited video but I can go over all this shit and put it up on YouTube still and it's the Vampire Masquerade lorry stuff people love you know uh, I'm going somewhere in between because <clears throat> easier so hopefully that'd be nice um, and I got some cool ideas for a game I actually thought of an idea for a uh, I just have to come up with a like extended plot uh, when you mentioned switching systems, uh, I had actually uh, come up with a idea for doing a, a Shadowrun game, where uh, because it's because originally Earth Dawn and Shadowrun were supposed to be connected, uh, you start by making Earth Dawn characters, and mm. in the first session uh, you would go in to make a Shadowrun character, so you make them both together. So basically, like you, you make your, and the thing is, I depending on how much you want to dive into the Earth Dawn character creation, Welcome, new I want to kind of, of the force Empire. it too much, you know, uh, because it's going to basically yeah. be Shadowrun. But it would be like you know, you might get some extra things if you build a more interesting character. I thought it'd be an interesting idea um, to explore the go betweens between that thing. Uh, so maybe I'll, I'll work on that. I don't know if I'll actually uh, finish putting it together. You know, it was an interesting concept. I might work on that. It would probably be like a you know couple months for that one. Uh, long. But other games. I, I've been thinking about like other uh, content to put up. And uh, hey, uh, since it's the end of the show, thanks for the resubscription, please. Thank you. 53 months. Cool. Uh, thank you for hanging out, Momo. Uh, yeah. Those of you in chat, uh, Lightning, Worm, thank you for popping by. Um, again, I'll probably be back monday should be i'm i'm i'll see what i do i'll figure it out by then but uh maybe i'll feel good enough for shadows of loathing if not i'll come up with an alternate but um back to at least buccaneers next week and uh we should be back on the show then next week too so i think we're gonna pop off and just uh mm -hmm. go relax for the rest of our saturday yeah. everybody i hope you have a good one Farewell. See ya. <laughs>